And it is always a good day when we get to talk to our man, Kirk Morrison. It Kirk, is. the busiest man in professional football. <laughs> so of the 19 shows that you have on the docket, what were you doing this morning? Uh, this morning, uh, NFL Radio. Nice. So I've been you know, I've been with NFL Radio for SiriusXM for uh, eight years now, and it's been great. Every year, being able to cover the Super Bowl and uh, be around just the festivities, Radio Row, it's always a, a great atmosphere. We couldn't do it last year, you know? So it's like the big family reunion, high school reunion this year, seeing people that I haven't seen in probably like two or three years. I know. And speaking of reunions, we were in Vegas last week yes. for the Pro <laughs> Bowl, which fun. felt like a reunion of its own <laughs> because we were talking about the people you haven't seen in a year and a half, right. two years. We're going around. We're seeing all our pals around the league like, oh, my God, you're married. You got yeah. a kid. <laughs> you're brunette instead right. of blonde. It's incredible. But uh, the game itself, obviously, you know, no one's there to see the final score of the game. But the festivities, right. the way that Vegas was able to put it on, it, I felt like it was really exciting for not only the city but the league too. I, I just, man, Vegas is a sports town now. And I think the Pro Bowl was kind of the start of it. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to see college football championships. We're going to see the, pro, uh, the, the the NFL draft coming up. You know what I mean? The Super Bowl in a couple of years. So I'm excited just to see that Vegas had that opportunity because when you think of Vegas now, it is the Las Vegas Raiders. It is the franchise. I've always said it's the identity of a city. And if the Raiders are winning, which they're doing now, made it to the playoffs, it makes Vegas have an even bigger, I think, scope on the entire landscape of not only the NFL, but I think the world as a place that everybody wants to visit. And, I mean, think about this, too. Like, I don't think it's a tough sell to say, hey, let's get three of our buddies together. Let's go to Vegas for a week. Go watch <laughs> go right. watch a Raiders game. Like, yep. like there's, there's worse places to go spend your time. But, you know, we talk about the Raiders and coming off of a good, a quality 10-win campaign, yep. return to the playoffs. And it hasn't been busy, or it hasn't been boring with us. It's Correct. never boring. A new head coach, never. a new GM. <laughs> if you're a fan of the silver and black, yeah. what do you need to know about Josh McDaniels, and why should you like this hiring right now? I'm always been I've always been a big fan of coaches in their second time around as being a head coach. I really do, because they realize what they could have done differently the first time. And Josh McDaniels has spent time away from coaching, or away from being a head coach. You know, he talked about how being uh, away from after being fired by the Denver Broncos and taking the St. Louis Rams sort of coordinator analyst job and just kind of stepping away and looking at football from a different landscape. And then he goes back to New England and obviously becomes uh, the offensive coordinator again there. But I think he's seen football at different from different angles, from different eyes, different quarterbacks. Right. We all know it's been Tom Brady, but he saw through the eyes of Tim Tebow. He's looked at it through Kyle Orton. He's looked through the eyes. Um, I mean, Sam Bradford. He's looked through the eyes of Mac Jones now. And now he gets the opportunity to hopefully be with Derek Carr. And, and that's sorry, not to cut you off. That's one thing that I, I'm really intrigued by is what he did with Mac Jones a year ago. Absolutely. I mean, you remember if we go back and look, it's the nature of the beast. You know this as well as I do. But yeah. when you go to the draft and all those quarterbacks that get picked in the first round, there were so many eyes on them. There's so much criticism for everything they do. Correct. Mac Jones going into the process was not the, the number one power ranked guy out of yeah. those signal callers, right? Ends up being the last guy taken in the first round. Objectively, has the best rookie season of any of them. And I'm sure Josh McDaniels had a lot to do with that. I'm sure the <laughs> staff around yeah. him had a lot to do with it. But you look at what he was able to do with a young guy, a guy that didn't, that was highly touted coming out, but wasn't right. the de facto number one guy. And then you throw him into, into the mix with a guy like Derek Carr, who has the Pro Bowls, who has all the arm talent, right. who has done everything you can do in this league. That, to me, is where things get very exciting. You get excited because of the you have a quarterback that's seen a lot, like you mentioned. It's, it, it comes down to decision-making, and that's what I've always seen from Josh McDaniels is being able to have a plan of attack and then be able, being able to, to adjust. Mm -hmm. You know, I've talked to him during many Super Bowls and, and covering the Super Bowls, and that's always a question, hey, how do you handle it? And he, One of his things that he would always tell me is that I can't wait to adjust at halftime. I can't wait to adjust the next series. We adjust play to play, right? The next play, I'm in the headset with Tom, and Tom's looking at me, and they adjust on the fly. I think that's where Derek Carr is at, too, that he can be able to see something. If they give you a coverage, hey, the next time we get it, I'm going to do something different, where you can go to the sideline and tell them they'll, they're giving us something different. Let's do this. That's what Derek, I think, and Josh can now unleash. That's what I'm seeing from these quarterbacks. Yeah, it's a lot of young guys coming into the league, but guys like Derek, guys like Matt Ryan, we're seeing Matthew Stafford, the older quarterbacks. No longer we're going to see Ben Roethlisberger, Tom Brady, Drew Brees. And so that next group 
is where Derek is, and I think you can entrust him with an offense. You know, and I'm glad you brought up the fact that it, it feels like Josh and his crew have a plan because mm -hmm. when we sat down with we sat down with Josh, and we also sat down with Dave Ziegler the first day they came in, and that was my my biggest take takeaway from the both of them. One, it feels like they're both very much in sync with what they want to do and how they want to do it. But Dave Ziegler comes in, and he strikes me as a man that has a plan. Correct. He understands what he's going to do. He understands the step to get to that plan. But I think for me, Kirk, the biggest thing that my biggest takeaway from him was when he talked to us, he was very open and honest about, look, I am continually evaluating not only the guys on my staff, the processes. I'm evaluating myself, too. Right. So how can we get better week after week? He goes, if there's something that's kind of funky week seven, I'm not going to wait until the offseason to adjust it. We're going to fix our process right. now. And yeah. I think that is such an incredible way to approach not only football, but I mean life in general, too. Uh, he comes from a place in New England that they make decisions more so of the future of the franchise. Mm -hmm. Sometimes does it affect the current, the present? Yes, it does. But it, in the end, it usually works out for the team in the future. I think you now talk about the Raiders, and maybe it's holding on to a guy for a little bit longer. Or you say, you know what, a guy may not really be in our plans for the future. We may trade him. Yes, it hurts the fan base. Oh, we, but you realize that it's for the best of our football team. And in a salary cap league, you try to get as much assets as possible, as much money as possible to go out and get guys that go out and are immediate contributors, right? I look at just because – we go off of where these guys come from, Ziegler and McDaniels. And I look at like a Matthew Judon from, you know, the Baltimore Ravens previously was one of the great pickups this offseason for New England, right? Thinking about Kendrick Bourne from the 49ers and how he was able to play at the wide receiver spot. They even took a guy in Nelson Aguilar who had a career year for the Raiders. So you're seeing a wide range of where Ziegler and McDaniels have come from, the New England Patriots and how they've employed and looked at some of the other players around the league. And so I think that mindset of being able to turn every rock over and see what's under there, that's what I think that this new coaching staff and general manager will be doing. And one thing that I think is also very important is that working relationship. And yes. Dave and Josh talked about it a lot, and obviously they're college buddies, mm -hmm. which is an incredible story in and of itself. <laughs> right. But the fact that, that they do have that personal relationship, they've worked together for so long, they've enjoyed incredible successes together, Correct. obviously some kind of bumps in the road along the way. But how valuable is that now, that, the, that they can have an open conversation with each other, they can be transparent with each other, and they say, hey, I disagree with you on A, B, and C, let's right. figure out a way to do this. Yeah, and you don't get that too often. Usually it's like general manager hires the head coach or head coach is already there, then he hire a general manager. These two guys came in together, so they're kind of married. Um, they're, they're, they're married to the job. I look at the success of the 49ers, right, because I think that's like the, lad, the latest. For me, that's the one I look at how John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan both came in together and how they built that organization to where they've been in a couple of conference championship games, a Super Bowl appearance a couple of years ago, and I'm looking at the foundation of what the Raiders have now, and I'm not. this isn't a situation where the Raiders have to be rebuilt. I think that realistically this is a team that can compete not only for a division title, but why can't they be the Cincinnati Bengals come next year? And I think that this team is more talented than the Cincinnati Bengals, to be honest. When you look at top to bottom, I think that the Raiders have that nucleus of players that just need that opportunity. I mean, Hunter Renfro, one of the best receivers in the league. Darren Waller, injuries. But, look, tell me he's still not a top tight end in the National Football League. Now you're going to get more receivers possibly in the draft. But overall, I really like this roster, and I think that's how quickly they can change it over. And I think it says a lot that Josh McDaniels has been courted every offseason for the right. past 12, 13, 14 years. And every year, respectfully, says, you know what? I'm gotcha. happy where I'm at. Things are going well, but for whatever reason, this opportunity, coming to coach a 10-win team, a yeah. playoff team, with, like you said, a great nucleus of guys, I think speaks to what the Raiders have built internally and how they can kind of take that next step in 2022 and beyond. Well, I think also, too, he chose chose us, yes. just to be honest. And it, it wasn't – I mean, obviously the job was offered to him, but I think he chose us because we saw how it went in his last job opportunity <laughs> where he chose them and said, "Nah, you know what, I'm okay. I'll do something different. And we saw what happened with the Indianapolis Colts. That's that's now in the past. But I think he looked at the foundation of this team, how good the Raiders were this year, despite a lot of things that happened off the field that didn't in really involve football. Um, you look at having the quarterback there and not having to sort of get a guy up to speed, like a young quarterback or Mac Jones, you know, rookie. He's got all the pieces here, running backs, tight ends, you know, uh, offensive line that will definitely get some more work and get revamped. 
but you have to like the direction of the football team. I mean, the foundation of the foundation of the house is great. You, yes, need, a new, you need a new set of paint, yes. man. Got to put some of that, put some of that recess lighting yeah. in. Maybe redo a bathroom here and there. But I mean, the bones are good. Yeah, you get yeah. another couch here and there. You know what I mean? It's all good. It's all good, man. But hey, yeah. Kirk, I appreciate your time, and I know we're here talking talking all things football. We're here on Radio Row, yeah. an exciting Super Bowl, a Super Bowl that kind of just as the objective fan. It feels nice. It feels it feels good that there's uh, some fresh blood in the yeah, game. Yeah, new blood. We like that. Um, and it's and it's teams that we're falling in love with too. Mm -hmm. um, I think Cincinnati Bengals and a lot of lot of Raider fans saw Cincinnati come in uh, to Allegiant Stadium and they played well against us. They went out, and so I think a lot of Raider fans are believers in what Cincinnati um, being here because we saw what it looked like and we saw Joe Burrow and Joe Mixon and the game plan they had against us. And you're like, okay, that's a good football team. Remember before where you lost to the Bengals, it was like, how you oh lose to the Bengals? Oh, yeah, here we go. Yeah, yeah you like, <laughs> you hate to say it, you almost wear like a badge of honor this yeah. year. Like, man, we lost to a really good football team that's representing our conference. And went toe-to-toe -to -toe with them literally the last play. All the way to the last mm -hmm. play. You know what I mean? And, and that's what I, you know, that's what I take is that, you know, the Raiders in a situation now, they look at the teams that are in the Super Bowl, and that's how I'm looking at it, that the Raiders can play with anybody. You know, like you mentioned, they came all the way down to the last play, last drive, and now I'm excited to watch and see how this thing plays out with the Bengals because a lot of teams are looking at what Cincinnati did this year and saying, why can't that be us next year? Yeah. Like, no, Rams are all in. That's different. They're, they're, yeah. <laughs> they're, on a, told, they're all in. they like, look, man, we don't care about first-round draft picks. We value player over asset. Is, isn't it interesting, though, when you look at these two teams, that they ended up in the same place, right? They're yes. in the Super Bowl, but they did it in two completely different ways. Yeah, it, it's uh, kind of remarkable. And, you know, for me, living in Los Angeles right now currently and watching the way the Rams have truly done it, it's, it's, been, it's been pretty wild because they've done it actually two different ways, and people don't remember because remember, they, back in 2012, they were part of the RG3 trade. Remember, they let Washington take their pick, and they got all of these first-round picks. And so they started hoarding picks and, like, oh, we got all these picks. And what did they get out of it? They got some first-rounders, but guys that truly didn't pan out. And I think their general manager, Les Snead, said, okay, I've done it that way. And it didn't necessarily work out. Now – I value player more than the asset. You don't know what a draft pick is going to yield you, mm -hmm. but I know what a proven player, a proven commodity is going to do, and that may be worth two first-round picks, but you know what you're getting. And so it is, to your point, two different styles, one that was built on uh, free agency and the draft and the right quarterback being selected, and another one is just using your nucleus and going out and giving up your assets to get proven commodities and proven players. At the end of the day, it both comes down to having good quarterbacks, though, right? I mean, that's that that's is, one thing yeah. they do share in common, right? <laughs> it's all about the signal call. Yes, it, is. it sure is. It sure is. Well, hey, man, this was so much fun. I'm glad we were able to see you. It was great seeing you last week in Vegas. Yes, you came yes. to our neighborhood. We came yeah. to your neighborhood this week, and I'm sure we're going to see you in the desert pretty soon. Vegas is a second home now. I, I was already going to Vegas a lot, but now I'm going a lot more, obviously, because the silver and black is there. I know. And every time we see you, it's a great time. So, Kirk, good luck this week, man. Congratulations on everything. We'll see you soon. All right, hey, brother? Always, brother. Glad to be with you.